Hey Rockdown Beer viewers, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, this video is probably way overdue. Uh, remember when my wife and I made that Sicer uh, a thousand years ago? I think it was a thousand years ago. I think it was an entire millennium ago that we made that Sicer. Uh, yeah, we made a very, very basic Sicer, which was, um, if you don't know what a Sicer is, it's half mead and half um, cider. Sicer. Uh, we made it just with some some stuff you can get at the supermarket here in Denmark. Some you know some cheap uh, supermarket honey and and uh, some uh, apple must and uh, just some normal kind of apple juice. Uh, just as a kind of a thing we could do together and an experiment to see how it was. So I'm actually it's been it's been in the keg. Um, it's been uh, it's been kind of conditioning for a really long time, clearing up and and stuff. And I'm actually um, I'm actually bottling it today. You can see that's that's it right there. Waiting for a few bottles to to finish sterilizing and star sand. So I thought that I would record a little review of it. So here it is in the my extremely long party tap thing. You can see it is carbonated. Um, my wife wanted it to be uh, semi-carbonated. Uh, it is... I wouldn't hazard a guess as to the like CO2 volumes, but it's um, it's pleasantly carbonated. It's like um, it's like those white wine spritzers level of carbonated. You can probably see it in there. Kind of. You can see the little ring on top. There's nice little bubbles in it. Yeah, so that's what my wife wanted uh, for it. Uh, she didn't want it to be still, she wanted it to be carbonated. So that's what I did. And I am just gonna close the fridge quickly. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, closing, minimizing the fridge noise. I am standing right next to it because I am I am bottling. I said that I said that already. So there it is. Look, um, it was amazingly clear in the carboy, and then uh, I think that that's oh well, it's probably more condensation on the glass than anything else. But it did get a little hazier once I carbonated it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty clear. Uh, like I said, semi-carbonated. It smells like, well, it smells like white wine with a twist, which will be the theme of this <laughs> review. It's got that very, very dry, um, uh, winey type, white wine type uh, smell. There is an undertone of, um, there's just a little bit of honey in it, a little bit of kind of an apple. I I don't know if you gave me this blind if I'd be able to tell that there was apple and honey in it but I would definitely kind of pick up on those smells I might still think it's a white wine but I, I don't know I'm not a really good wine guy and I haven't had a ton of sicer without some kind of fruit or anything in it it's definitely a a white wine yeah with a twist that's that's what I'm gonna go with Surprisingly, it tastes very similar. Um, it's very, very dry. I did not back sweeten it at all. Um, it finished out below, you know, below zero. So it is, you know, when you're when you're fermenting honey and and um, and cider and stuff, it'll it'll ferment all the way down below. You know, the hydrometer can barely uh, show where it goes. So. It is incredibly dry, which for me, that's how I prefer um, both my cider and my mead. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a guy who likes incredibly sweet things, so that's how I tend to take my cider and and stuff like that is is dry. That being said, this is probably a little too dry. Like it is, it is really bone dry has a lot of nice tones of like white wine. I don't know if that's the wine yeast or what. 
It does hold some cider characteristics. I've had some very, very dry French ciders that, that this, this reminds me of. There is a bit of alcohol on the back ends. Um, it didn't have a really high starting gravity. I think 1058, maybe 1060. You'd have to go back to the video. I'll link the video up here somewhere. Um, but uh, since it fermented all the way down, it's probably, you know, it's probably 7%, maybe, maybe higher. Um, I wasn't really all scientific with this since it was kind of an experiment. Oh, I'm getting all glary over here. But yeah, there is some meatiness to it. Um, the honey kind of really fermented out though. Um, it's mostly an apple kind of really extremely dry cider and white wine characteristic to it. Uh, do I like it? You know what? I've got another glass that I didn't, that's been sitting out because I wanted to see how it does when it warms up because this is ice cold. I'm, I'm bottling it. So it's, it's in the fridge ice cold right now. I'll come back with the warmer thing after I'm done, um, the warmer one after I'm done bottling and I'll give you final thoughts. All right, guys, I'm back. Keg is kicked. I got actually quite a few bottles, um, more than I thought there was, it was stretching nine liters on this thing. So yeah, but as promised, here is the glass. It's been sitting for about, I don't know, 40 minutes, kind of warming up. It's, uh, it's not room temperature, but it's only slightly chill now. Uh, but you, you can still see it's still, uh, there's still bubbles rising in it. So carbonation is really sticking around in this thing. Hasn't really changed the smell. There's a little bit more kind of a sharp edge to it that kind of belies its, um, its uh, higher alcohol content. Yeah, it's definitely a bit more, it's still relatively round, but when it's cold, you can barely tell how high the alcohol is in it. A little bit warmer, it's, um, yeah, it's a lot more like um, warm white wine where you get that kind of hotness as you're drinking it. It's that, that kind of thick booziness to it. Which, I mean, for a beer this, uh, this dry thickness shouldn't be, I'm not really sure what I'm talking about, maybe. I may have sampled a bit too much as I was bottling. <laughs> no, I mean, the warming, it doesn't change the, the flavor intense, immense, immensely, intensely, immensely. One of those words. Um... What are my final thoughts on this thing? Hmm. Um, my thoughts, personally, uh, I think it's a bit too dry. Um, I think it's a little one, kind of one-dimensional. It's 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 really close to white wine, though. I'm I'm kind of surprised about that. And I'm not a huge white wine drinker, so not like you know. So it's not exactly my favorite. My wife, however, she likes it. Um, she actually really likes it. She thinks it came out really nice, which that's kind of what I was going for, was uh, something that she wanted to help me make and something that she would enjoy drinking. So I think on that front, I did, um, yeah, we nailed it. We, we got, um, she's a white wine drinker. She's a sparkling white wine drinker, especially. So this is kind of like right up her alley. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think my wife would give it big thumbs up. I'm gonna give it a, yeah. I wish I'd put fruit in it. I want fruit in it. I wanted to put fruit in it. I want fruit in it. I wish there was fruit. Next time there'll be fruit. That's my that's my review of it. There will be fruit. Yeah, man. Blueberry, raspberry. 
thing would be killer. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I think my next video will be me in the U.S. Uh, I kind of recorded this way in the past in case I was a bit too uh, busy, uh, close to my trip to to do this video. So, um, yeah, I think you'll be seeing me in the U.S. I might take some of this to let my brother and his fiance try. Uh, but yeah, blah, 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 blah. Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks for watching me ramble my way through this uh, pretty drink. And uh, we're going to go out on some, some real, some swirling. Oh, like a real wine connoisseur now. Mmm, swirl, swirl and sniff. Mmm, yeah, mmm. Mmm, definite tones of bullshit. Mmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mmm. Swirl, swirl, swirl.